Hey young colleagues, welcome to my workplace at Rana Ghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, I want to demonstrate a manual small incision cataract surgery for first year ophthalmology residents all over the world. First, you take a muscle hook and the superior rectus holding forceps. Muscle hook in your right hand and the superiectus holding forceps in your left hand. And now place the muscle hook in the inferior fornix. Press, the eyeball turns little down and now pinch the superior rectus tendon and apply the superior rectus brutal suture. This step is very important for a first year ophthalmology resident who is going to start SICS. And now the ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated applying povidone iodine. And now if you pull the superior rectus brittle suture what happens? The eyeball turns little down and the eyeball becomes stable. So it acts like a third hand. It makes the eyeball stable and it turns the eyeball little down. Now peritomy. Peritomy is being done from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, about 4 o'clock hours. and do the peritomy just along the limbus and now very mild very mild white field cautery is to be done this step can be avoided by seniors who have done many SICS this time just touch over the blood vessels and lift the Whitfield cautery. Don't cause any charring of the sclera. The sclera should not contract. And now place the incision. Place the incision like this, almost straight incision and don't make it very small. Make it about 7.5 millimeter or in hard cataracts about 8 millimeter. This incision is about 7.5 millimeter. First superficially then use this crescent blade to go to a deeper plane and once you are almost half thickness deep go forward like this and then sweep backward in this way in this way you can make a very good tunnel so half of the tunnel on the left side is made and now we have to go to the right side again the same way go forward and sweep backward and sideways. The inner opening of the tunnel should be a little larger so you go laterally more and make it a funnel kind of opening. The tunnel is prepared now make a side port at 9 o'clock and inject an air bubble. Many colleagues don't use air bubble but this is my routine practice. I use an air bubble and beneath this air bubble I inject the tripan blue dye. Staining becomes very fast if we inject the dye under an air bubble. Now the dye is washed out 
and 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is taken and it is injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled up with this viscoelastic substance. And now, a 26 case band needle cystitome is used to do capsulorexis. Now, see how to prepare the cystitome. Take a 26 gauge needle and a strong needle holder. The bevel is down and opposite the bevel, you are going to bend it. And this bend is not 90 degree, it is less than 90 degree, say about 70 degree or 80 degree bend. Now another bend near the half and this is also not 90 degree bend, it is less than 90 degree. So your cystitome is prepared and now use this instrument to do capsulorexis. Go in, incise the capsule and make a flap. Flip this flap so that under surface is facing the corneal endothelium now. Now guide this flap, go along the border in this case because the size of the people in this case is about 6 millimeter. If the people is fully dilated, you don't go along the border, you will be away from the margin of the people. Make a rexis of about 6 millimeter size so that nucleus prolapse becomes very easy. And now inject visco. Now the sclerocorneal tunnel is opened. First, the keratome goes at the anterior extent and then it goes down. And then you go sideways, cut when you go forward. In this way, you are making, you are opening the tunnel. The inner opening is little larger than the scleral opening. Now do hydro dissection. This is a 27 gauge cannula. Inject fluid very gently and you will see that the nucleus will prolapse. On pole will prolapse if the rexis is about 6 millimeter. And now inject visco. Take a Sensky hook. This is visco, 2% SPMC. Now take the Sensky hook and dial this nucleus and it will come out from the capsular bag into the anterior chamber. Now this is a very important step. Inject visco both in front and behind the nuclear mass. Why in front? Because you want to protect the corneal endothelium. And why behind? Because you want the posterior capsule to go behind. And now irrigating vectis is being used in this case. It is attached to a ring lactate bottle. And your left hand is free now. Your left hand is holding the superior rectus brittle suture. You are lifting the eyeball. Go in and depress the posterior leaf and see how easily the nucleus comes out if the wound size is adequate. And now there is a lot of epinuclear material in this case. So what to do? Do one thing. Use viscoelastic substance and do visco expression. Inject visco on either side, both right and left. And now depress the posterior leaf and the visco will come out. When you depress the posterior leaf, you can inject some more visco. And now take Simco cannula, flush some ringa lactate 
towards the cornea so that whatever cortical matter is sticking to the cornea gets dislodged and visibility improves and now use the sideboard to remove most of the cortical matter because when you use the sideboard the antechamber remains well formed always hold the anterior part of the cortex meaning the part of the cortex that is just under the anterior capsular rim hold in that part and pull centrally be very gentle in every maneuver and now there is some cortex at 7 o'clock to remove that cortex we have to go through the main incision so inject viscoelastic substance and fill up the anterior chamber why because if you inject visco the visco comes out gradually and the anterior chamber remains formed for some time and during that time you can remove the cortical matter if there is only ringa lactate in the anterior chamber the anterior chamber can collapse suddenly and you may touch the corneal endothelium lot of cortex is there at 7 o'clock it has come out the some cortex at 6 o'clock yes it has come out i hope cortical clean up is complete let us see the people has become small so inject visco and use a y shaped instrument to check if you have removed the cortex all around or not here is the y shaped instrument it looks like an y it is very good to retract the iris in this way you can retract the iris and check if there is any cortex at any place seems ki hook is not so efficient in checking this if there is any cortex or not so cortical clean up is complete and now some more visco is injected and then the intraocular lens is to be placed in the capsular bag hold the lens with macpherson's near the trailing end hold the optic near the trailing end gently lift the anterior leaf of the main wound now use both the forceps and go the leading haptic should go in the capsular bag now use only the macpherson's and go forward and little depress the trailing haptic so that it goes into the capsular bag now since the people has become small you can again check with the oi instrument if it has gone into the capsular bag yes it has gone into the capsular bag and now we have to remove the visco that we have used for implantation of the intraocular lens this step is very important because if you don't remove the visco nicely there can be visco induced raised intraocular pressure to avoid that you remove visco from anterior chamber as well as go behind the iol and remove visco from the capsular bag this step is very important the step to remove visco from capsular bag you may not be able to do it but you can ask your mentor to help you in this step and now after removing the viscoelastic substance inject some moxifloxacin and hydrate the corneal stroma on either side of the side ports so that this stab incision closes becomes autotight all the wounds 
should be watertight at the conclusion of surgery. Now, after hydrating the side port, this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. This is very important. Do a final lavage and leave only pure bases or ringer lactate in the anterior chamber. Form the anterior chamber very nicely in this way and your intraocular portion of the C is done. And now I usually prefer to use a releasable suture for apposition of conjunctiva to the limbus. This is how you put the releasable suture. You have to make three loops and just pull it. Take Macpherson's in your right hand and a straight suture tank in your left hand. This is one, two and three. Three loops. Hold it here. Pull it. And now cut here. Here. You cut and when you pull this thread in the OPD it will come out. So this is the releasable suture, pull and trim the thread with the needle, trim the other thread also but keep it longer than the previous thread. Now after checking all the wounds, you can conclude the case. These are the post-op pictures after 18 hours, cornea is clear antechamber is quiet, the conjunctiva is nicely opposed to the limbus and patient has 6 by 12 unaided vision. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will give you necessary tips to do your first few cases of SICS.